Namo Didapa. Good morning. Thanks for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The third mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by sexual misconduct, I vow to cultivate responsibility and learn ways to protect the safety and integrity of individuals, couples, families, and society. I'm determined not to engage in sexual relations without love and a long-term commitment. To preserve the happiness of myself and others, I'm determined to respect my commitments and the commitments of others. I will do everything in my power to protect children from sexual abuse and to prevent couples and families from being broken by sexual misconduct. Our Dharma lesson this morning, we're reading No Need to Climb Aboard the Train by Ajahn Amaro from his book, Catastrophe Apostrophe. Going back to the train analogy, we stand on a train platform. We see a train bound for Paris, Edinburgh, Exeter, Bangkok. Perhaps we know people there or feel that it is a beautiful place. Perhaps we have heard that there's something interesting or exciting happening there, but that doesn't mean we need to get on board the train. We can like, but not want. There is a choice there. The forest ajans of many generations have spoken of mindfulness of feeling as the most accessible exit point from the cycle. That was true in the past, and it can be seen to be true today. The story of the uncomfortable young bhikkhu Sumedho was set in a forest in Thailand over 50 years ago, but these principles relate to us equally, here and now, in the materially developed West, that is why they are useful. For each of us, the encouragement is to look where the mind moves towards dislike, fear, liking, or opinionating. Is the object of like or dislike coarse or subtle? Is the object of fear internal or external? Get to know where the mind becomes entangled with objects of fear, desire, aversion, ambition, or opinion. Where are they located? When we get to know those objects, we can consciously learn how to be aware of the feelings that arise in those areas. We have to know for ourselves where our points of grasping are, what we love, what we hate, what we're afraid of, what we have opinions about, and what is familiar to us, what we are nostalgic for. It's useful to explore all these areas, to become familiar with them. Even tiny things like our attachment to the correct way of slicing a tomato, or how we feel the knife should be held when bread is buttered, how people slouch so much, or how English really is the best language. What are the areas where we get upset, excited, afraid, irritated? What are our cherished opinions? Our religion, our politics, our family. See what effects are triggered in the mind. Each one of us has unique areas of attachment and entanglement. So it is up to each one of us to explore and see where we get lost. We see that, feel that, and then we apply this meditation on feeling. See if you can like, but not want. Dislike, but not hate. What's then the result of making that effort? The reason the Buddha described the process of dependent origination was to help living beings stop suffering. The letting go of craving is said to be the easiest and most accessible exit point from the wheel of birth and death. This is something which all of us can do. We can apply these teachings to our moment-to-moment -moment experience, and the degree to which the teachings are thus applied is the degree with which they will be genuinely useful.
May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be at peace. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me today.